Hello everyone and welcome back to another Figurehead Reviews video. And today we are taking a look at the Marvel Legends Deluxe Apocalypse. Here we have Apocalypse displayed in the front window with his various accessories. Down near the bottom we see the X-Men logo and then on the yellow band there we see his name. On the side we have some artwork of Apocalypse which is going to be in the same style as the Sugarman Wave artwork which is fitting since this is the character version based on the Age of Apocalypse storyline. And that artwork is going to be the same on both sides. On the back, we get a full product shot there of Apocalypse standing tall. Looks pretty cool. Then we do have a quick read-up. Apocalypse launches an offensive against humankind in pursuit of a world where mutants rule and only the strong survive. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and get this open and take a look at Apocalypse. And here is Apocalypse outside of his packaging. And... You know, I like this figure so far, and I mentioned it in my Sugar Man video that I was really happy that Hasbro didn't make Apocalypse the Build-A-Figure for the Age of Apocalypse wave. Uh, it seems like it would have been a no-brainer for him to do that, but by giving us a character like Sugar Man as the Build-A-Figure, it allowed them to do the deluxe treatment for Apocalypse. That way we get two Build-A-Figure quality figures, especially villains, for that wave. So I am really thankful that Hasbro did that, actually. And so far, my impressions on this figure are pretty good. No major complaints coming out so far. So we'll find out more once we do our closer looks. Before we do that, though, we do have some accessories for Apocalypse. Starting first with his left hand. So out of the package, we do get this open gesture hand. But we do get the alternate hand here in the form of a fist. And then we do also get this guy here, which came out looking really cool. Just a skull. I mean, it's nothing uh, too crazy, but you get some really good detail there. Like, we get some fractures in the skull. You get a big crack right there. And then you get a bit of a wash going over it just to help bring out some of that detail. But I think that turned out looking really good. Now, in standing straight up, Apocalypse is coming in at 8 inches tall, which makes him about 20.3 centimeters. He's actually just a hair under that, but it was easier to round up to 8 inches. But since he doesn't have any other accessories other than the alternate head, which we're going to look at here in a moment, let's go ahead and jump in and get a look at the paint and sculpt on Apocalypse. And getting up close first, starting with the big grinning head sculpt, you can see it turned out pretty decent. You get some subtle shading around the eyes there. Get the purple around the lips. Teeth came out decent. This eye, unfortunately, not quite where it needs to be. Looks like it's a little high. That's not too bad. Paint on his chin, same thing. It's a little bit off, but not that noticeable. And then the face is a separate piece from the head, which unfortunately on this one on mine, it's a little bit of a gap right there. Not too bad. I don't think it was on the other side. Eh, certainly not as noticeable. Uh, from the side is that one. Uh, but switching over to the other head sculpt, and we can see a much more serious version of Apocalypse, but we still get the same shading around the eyes, purple for the lips, and it still came out looking really good. And to be honest with you, I like both of these head sculpts, but I think I'm going to probably go with the grinning one. That just seems better suited for the craziness that is Apocalypse from that series. Now looking at the rest of the body, so you have this neck piece here. It can come off. It's going to be held in place. There's two pins underneath here. I guess let's just take the head off just so we can demonstrate. So it is held in, just the two pins there. So if it slides off, not a big deal. Looking at the shoulder plates, so the shoulder plates do flex if you do want to uh, you know, do some articulation there, but we can see we have some pinholes here at the top, and that is going to be where the cape goes in. You do have the two pegs right there on the cape, so you can pin those in without much difficulty. There we go. And it holds in place actually pretty well. Uh, I didn't have too many problems with that, so I like that. Now, if you're messing with the shoulder pads and you freak out because you did something like, whoops, it comes out, that's actually okay. Uh, it's not going to uh, be broken or anything. You can just pin it right back in, and there you go. Now, looking down, though, at the rest of the body, so it's going to be the same body that we saw with the other Apocalypse figure, but, of course, we do have... Uh, brighter paint here for, or brighter plastic for the blue. This here, the dark blue, is a bit closer to the shade that we had with the uh, Build-A-Figure Apocalypse. It's still not quite as dark, 
but you can kind of see the inspiration there. But you can certainly see it's a much brighter blue looking uh, at the rest of the figure. So, uh, but putting him aside there, uh, we get some pretty basic paint around for some of the red parts there. And then the paint that does have the transition uh, at the upper torso is done well. And you can actually, when we get up close, you can see some of that flaking in the plastic there, really giving it kind of a shimmer, which is pretty cool. Uh, these big arm gauntlets do have a bit of a soft material here. And one of the things I will admit that I wasn't expecting, those gauntlets get in the way of the articulation a bit, but these big guys never really had great elbow articulation anyway. So if you pull this down a bit just to make sure it's snug against the arm, you will get a bit more range out of there. Oh, look at those big veins popping there on the bicep. Leg looks fine. Boots came out looking good. And not too bad there with the paint, but there's always little imperfections on these mass-produced items, so that is not unexpected. Uh, looking at the articulation, however, try to get the head back on. There is one limit to uh, the articulation with the head, and you know what? Let me pause this, and we'll get the head back on. Okay. The head is a bit tricky to get on with this piece on here, and unfortunately it does limit the articulation as well. He can look down, but obviously that gets kind of silly looking, so there is a downside to that. Uh, he can look up, though, about right there, so if you were to do some torso uh, poses, uh, he should be able to look up a bit. And then side to side a little bit, but this is going to get in the way again. The arms can come up almost a full 90 and i mean technically you can rotate them you have to bring it out a little bit just to avoid the shoulder pad there though you do have a bicep swivel as i mentioned with the elbows if you pull this gauntlet forward a little bit you can get a bit more out of the elbows but otherwise unfortunately you don't get a ton out of them you do have rotation and a hinge on all of the hands uh, just your standard flexion and extension hinge he does have a very deep ab crunch going forward and backwards. However, that cape, when you do have it on, is going to hinder backwards. He does have a waist rotation, legs that can actually come apart way more than necessary for this figure. He can kick forward pretty much all the way straight. Backwards, not much at all. does have a upper thigh cut, double jointed knees that actually aren't too bad. He does have a boot cut there, and then he has a hinge and ankle pivot. And that is going to do it for this video, everyone. And I feel like I kind of blew through this review again. I missed some of the red paint on his legs and stuff like that. So, I mean, there it is. He's got red paint on his legs, too. Uh, overall, the figure's not that bad. There's just not a whole lot going on. Uh, in terms of deco or anything like that, we just have some really cool accessories like the shoulder pads and the neck pieces and stuff that really make the figure true to the uh, original artwork. So that is really cool, and I think Hasbro actually did a good job with that. Uh, I will say that the articulation was a bit more limited than I thought it would be, mostly with the elbows, with the limitations there. And then any of the caped figures, you always have a bit of a hard time with some of the poses just because the cape might get in the way. But I think you can get creative enough to make it work. So overall, kind of like the rest of the Sugar Man wave, I see people getting this that you know like the Age of Apocalypse story or want to have at least an alternate X-Men type setup uh, with the Age of Apocalypse setup. So he's necessary for that. Uh, but otherwise, unless you're just an Apocalypse fan, this really isn't going to fit very well in a regular collection. He's going to go good with the Age of Apocalypse figures. So that's pretty much it. Uh, but like I said, that is it for this video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe for more content just like this. And as always, thanks for watching my videos, and have a great day.